Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I said I would come back, talk to you guys a little bit. I wanted to really research this out on Daniel chapter 9, 25. We know that it speaks about the Messiah himself. We know that he's going to be cut off in the midst of the week, verse 26. Uh, and the because because it says and shall anointed one be cut off right and there comes another prince but he's not the Mashiach he's not that anointed one uh, as we have here in Hebrew up here in purple Ad Mashiach Nagi the the Mas and until the Messiah the prince and then it gives the time space right it says there that it would be uh, seven weeks and three score excuse me and for three score and two weeks. Now, the way they translate this verse, it shall be built again in a broad place in a moat, but in troublous times. Well, the question comes up is what's going to be built? Everyone assumes the temple. Okay, Artaxerxes gave a decree about going and building the temple. He didn't know what he was doing, but obviously what Artaxerxes was doing was God knew that that Mashiach Nagid, the anointed prince, was coming. And technically there would be a, a, a temple. And even though the word uh, here that is being used, binata, is for the majority of the time in scripture, it's used as being built, built an altar, built this, built that. But I really begin to wonder if this has not been mistranslated. So what I'm going to share with you tonight is a conjecture. It's not a, I don't want to take this as a, um, what would we say? We don't want to take this as a doctrinal view. But I want to suggest something to you because I'm blown away. I mean, look at the scriptures I have up here on the screen for you. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 12 scriptures up here that are going to support what I'm about to tell you, or at least what I think that this could mean, uh, a, an alternative translation to this very part that you see highlighted in blue, and then that last part on verse 25 highlighted in yellow. Teshuv ve benita rachov ve chawutz betzok ha itim. All right, now there are certain aspects there that are definitely, I mean, the word rachov, rachov is a broad place. Okay, it's a broad place. It sometimes is translated as street, so is the word derech. Derech is also the word street. Uh, Rechov is translated as street, but it's also a broad place. And we're going to get into each one. The word tashuv, that literally means you will return. Now they translate that as again, because they're saying again, it shall be built again. But they leave out the word and, and they leave out the word you. So how can you translate it? It shall be built again when clearly it says tashuv. You will return. That's the first clue I had right there. Something didn't seem to fit. The prince is coming. And then he gives the time frame. And then he says, you will return. Tashuv, Tashuv, ve binita, rachov ve chawutz. Cha, I don't want to make sure I don't say it, it sound like chawutz, but cha, cha, a chet, a chet, okay, chawutz. My proposal is this, I want to share with you, I kind of wrote it down. I wrote down, you will return and build up children in a broad place diligently. That's the way I translate that. 
Now, I'm going to show you scripturally why. And I think this is really going to bless many of you. All right. And then the last part, the last two words where we have, but in troublous times, that could be easily translated that way without any problem. In a time of anguish. Time of anguish. It could be troubling times, but and in a time and in a in a anguishing times. But it's ha itim, so it is it is the times. The times will be very anguish. There'll be much anguish in those times. All right. Now I shared with you the other day when I just quickly looked at this word uh, where they have they use the word. And, uh, and shall be built, okay? Shall be built, okay? And it is, for the most part, throughout Scripture, the word built is exactly correct. So I don't fault the translators for doing what they did. Except for the part that tashuv, tashuv, you will return. It's very, I mean, yes, you can translate that word as again, but tashuv is always, or, or shuv, shuv means return, okay? Just shuv, tashuv, you return. All right, so you return, and then as I begin to share with you, what just really fascinated me here was that not only do you return, but we have multiple places in Scripture when they return. It's not just the word bina is also, it can be used as the word build up, but is to bring forth children or to... to uh, um, in this case here, Genesis 16, right? I, I want to show you King James on this as well. The reason I want to do that is because King James does use the alternative way of speaking of this word here. So I'm going to make sure you see. They're, they're still using build up, <coughs> which is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. But I want you to see the reason why I translate the way I do, right? Genesis 16. All right, let's get ready. Let me get back over here where we're starting at here. Verse 2, okay? They put on here, And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. Go in, I pray you, unto my handmaid. It may be that she, uh, I shall be builded up through her. Okay, and this one here, it says that I may obtain children by her. So it's to obtain children. I find the word obtain very fascinating uh, in this case here because with the Messiah coming, he's coming for redemption. So it is to obtain his children. Just like in the case of Abraham and Sarah, this was all about the promised child in the first place. Okay, another one. This goes on and on and on and on throughout Scripture. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's steed? Because she was telling him, You need to give me children or else I'll die. So he says, Am I in God's steed? And he says, uh, She says, or he goes on to say, Who hath withheld from you the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid, Bela. Go in unto her, that she may bear upon my knees, and I also may build up through her. All right? Again, Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. Let's just quickly, we'll use the King James because uh, Genesis. Whoa, goodness, I hate this advertisement junk. Genesis 30. And we drop down to verse 3. She said, Behold, my maid Bela, go into her, and she shall bear upon my knees that I may also have children by her. You see, why, why does it use this word in here? Because the very word to begin with does come from, the, it's a, the very root of this is the word sons. But it's also, it's just, you add a few, a letter here and a letter there, and now you have built, all right? So I think this is one of the reasons, but nonetheless, it doesn't end there. Let's take, and there's more than what I'm showing. I'm just showing you a few here. This is Deuteronomy. 
And this was under the law of Moses, all right? Deuteronomy uh, chapter 25, verse 7 to 9 here. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up into the gate of the elders and say, My husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother unto me. If you'll notice, everything is about preser preserving the royal seed line of Israel, which was the Messiah was going to bring forth, right? Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak in him. And if he stand and say, I like not, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife draw nigh unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot, spit on his face, and she shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto the man that doth not build up his brother's house. Wow, there you go right there. Build up not his brother's house. Now, if you were to look at that, uh, Deuteronomy 25. Let's just quickly take a peek here in King James. I haven't even looked at this one here, but I'm assuming it's going to be not raise up children to thy brother's house. Uh, something to that effect. So, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot, spit in his face, shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto the man that will not build up, what, build up his brother's house. He uses the same verbiage there, build up his brother's house. Or bring, raise up children to his brother. Everything, like I said, though, is all about when they look at this, the people are like the temple itself. Remember in Corinthians, right? What do we have in Corinthians? Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So even when you look so many times at the word, when he uses his building, it's always talking about building an altar. Everything, almost practically everything you look at is building of the temple, right? So again, so we see the seed of Abraham, so to speak, coming along. It was to build up the house, to build up the children. So that's why I look, speaking about the Messiah coming, and when the Messiah comes, what is he coming for in the first place? It is to obtain the children, just as the scripture says it can be translated at. To obtain the children. Why? In order to build the true temple of God. And they assume it's building a temple, but they totally miss what the building of that temple really is. All right? Because you got to keep in mind, if the Messiah is coming, the temple's already built. So why are we looking at a future temple? It couldn't have been a physical temple that it was talking about in that case. So when we go back and look at Daniel 9, we see, and you shall return, build up children in the broad place diligently. And by the way, that word diligently also comes with the word threshing. Wow. We're going to look at Boaz uh, in the book of Ruth here in a moment. But before I do, let me jump over to Jeremiah. This is where we have the word Rehov, the broad place, right? Run you to and fro, Jeremiah chapter 5, through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. What do you know? In the broad places thereof. And it's right in the middle. Of, this is the root of it right there, Rehov. If you can find a man, if there be any that doeth justly, that seeketh truth, and I will pardon her. Now, I found this fascinating in itself. He tells them to go into the broad place seeking there, see if they can find a man that tells the truth. And Jesus Christ was the one man that came to tell the truth. And notice what he says, and I will pardon her. You know what's fascinating? Here we had right here the very story in John. Watch how this just comes together. And you really got to think about this, right? When I'm showing you this, this typing here of Jeremiah 5 to the Rehob, the broad place that we find in Daniel 9.25, 
there's a reason behind it. See, because now he's talking about that broad place. And he says, see if you can find a man, if there be any that doeth justly, that seeketh truth. Well, the Messiah, the prince that was coming, he's the one that is the truth. He's the one that seeks truth. He's the one that brings about truthful judgment. And God said, go in the broad place and look. Well, sure enough. And where does he go? What is he going to do? He tells they're going to return to build up children in the broad places diligently or at a threshing floor. Hmm. Let's take a look at why I chose this. So see in John, remember when Jesus, they bring the woman out to judge her. They brought her out into the street, basically right into the broad place. This is, they said, tempting him that, you know, uh, Moses commanded us that such should be stoned. But what say you? This they said, tempting him that they might have accu uh, accused him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that was, is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. <laughs> I find that so fascinating. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned you? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. You see, God said about Jeremiah, talking about finding, he said, Go out into the broad place. He said, If you can find a man that is there, be any that doeth justly. And that seeketh truth, I'll pardon her. Could Jeremiah have been prophesying of the very event that occurs in, in John's gospel? The woman is brought out into the street, thrown out there to be condemned by everyone. But they found right there in that street, in that broad place, there was a man that was what? He did justly. He sought truth. And the woman was pardoned as a result. Okay, let me share some more with you. In um, Acts chapter 7. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? If not my hand made all these things. Now the prophet was quoting from Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Wherefore is the house that you may build unto me? And where is the place that may be my resting place? For all these things hath my hand made, so all these things came, came to be, saith the Lord. But on this man will I look, even of him that is poor of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Okay, so what do we have here? What do we see? It's also mentioned to you that word diligently. It's also can be translated a threshing instrument. Keep in mind, how did, how did Christ, what, what is it when we look at Jesus Christ coming, he is the master of the harvest. Remember when he said to the apostles, he said, the fields are ripe, go you out and find laborers that they could bring the harvest in. And what is that bringing that harvest, harvest in? That's building up the children. So see, the Messiah came, and let me jump back over here at Daniel 9 again. Let's look at that once more, Daniel 9. Know therefore and discern that from the going forth of the word to restore and to build Jerusalem. Now see, by the way, to restore and build Jerusalem, that was Artaxerxes' decree. 
until to one anointed a prince, Ad Mashiach Nagid, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. You shall return and build up children in the broad places diligently or in the broad places with a threshing instrument. Could be translated that way as well. But it will be anguishing times or it will be the times of great trouble i find it in you shall return and build up children in the broad place and that could even be as i said translated as with a threshing instrument As I look at that, like I said, this is all a conjecture. It's just a thought. Diligently is definitely another way to translate that. And diligently. You shall bring forth children in the broad place and diligently. Or end with a threshing instrument. Why do I keep bringing that threshing instrument? Because it's one of the ways that the word could be translated, right? Well, here's what's, what you find interesting, though. Is look at the book of Ruth. You remember the story of Boaz as the near kinsman? And Naomi had told her when she found favor with Boaz to go in to the threshing floor and lie at that man's, at the young man's feet because he was a near kinsman and he could redeem her. Wash thyself, therefore, anoint thee and Put on raiment upon you and get you down to the threshing floor. But make not yourself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And you shall go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down. And he will tell thee what you shall do. Boaz is a beautiful type of the Messiah, the anointed prince. This place he comes into the threshing floor. When we read over here in Daniel, you shall return, build up children in the broad place and diligently or and with a threshing instrument. A harvest, so to speak. It's like I said, I you could translate, you could train and you shall return and build the road and diligently and it will be a troubling time kind of doesn't seem to make a lot of sense when you do it that way so maybe perhaps there is something to it i hope that what i'm telling you blesses your heart listen if you want to support the broadcast here we certainly greatly appreciate it we need your support Without you, we can't do what we do. And so I just want to remind you, IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website. And um, you can go right there. You can donate online by clicking the, on the right-hand side of the screen where it says Donate Online or by mail. That's above my head, Stephen Benoon. P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, or even right here on the website. Either way. You can do that. If you want to help support the broadcast, but yet and benefit yourself at the same time, uh, either EMP Shield, uh, if you go there, don't forget to use the coupon code INL50, uh, and you would just go to EMPShield.com. I'll put that in the link below. But LifeWave, extraordinary extraordinary beyond belief and i won't go i go into it a lot of times you can look at other videos and find that but whether you shop uh, and just want to be a customer be sure though to become at least a preferred customer so you can save fifty dollars 
but the product is absolutely amazing. The testimonies never seem to end. Everything for, that we've seen in our own friends from dementia being reversed, kidney failure being reversed, congestive heart failure being reversed here lately for me, using Eon, not even X39, but Eon, causing my brain and my nerves and my legs to reconnect to where I could run up and down a set of stairs. And I mean run. Whereas before, I struggled to walk up and down stairs. So, so many life-changing things and life-changing stories. It's truly a blessing. Uh, so I just encourage you, uh, if you want to do that, it would help you and it benefits us as well. And we thank you for that. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.